Hey, what's good, everybody? Welcome to the Doe Show. Happy, happy Tuesday. Election Tuesday here, actually. You've got uh, midterms going on, and so we thought, hey, for the Doe Show today, let's not talk about the midterms. Let's not do anything interesting in that category, because you know you got every news channel on the planet to watch if you're really soaked into that drama. We'll cover it a little bit, of course, on the closing beat today. There are some stats you may want to know as far as how it affects the market, so we're going to cover it. But today, I want to start by keeping the first part of this really, really short, because I want to send this out to our customers. I'm really excited about today's video or today's class. Uh, and of course, if you have questions, you know where to find me. We're Dustin. I'm Dustin Tibbetts, financial advisor with Jazz Wealth Managers. Uh, check us out at jazzwealth.com. But I basically just want to get right into this today. Four things that you need to know and ingrain in yourself, your mind, your body, your spirit, whatever, if you're going to conquer this whole retirement investing thing, or if you want to retire early. So kind of was playing with the title of this video. It could be for those of you that want to retire early or those of you that just started uh, investing for retirement this year and you're struggling a little bit, whether you're with us or somewhere else and you go, I just don't get it. I don't, I don't see things growing. I don't, I don't understand what's going on with the market. Okay, so we're gonna dive right in and of course, uh, you know, there's a lot of general videos that cover sort of like four things you must know. I'm guilty, right? I, like I said, uh, there's a, we were play, have a softball team and we were playing one of the other softball teams that we hadn't played before. And uh, when I got up to bat, one of the guys out there goes, I'm gonna give you four reasons he's gonna hit the ball. Like he saw the video, I thought that was funny. Anyways, uh, we're guilty of making some general videos too that are maybe more motivational or whatever. Today is not motivational. Today is geekdom, right? We're gonna go through the numbers. I want you to pay attention for just, like even just the first part. I spent a lot of time on this. Didn't sleep at all last night just getting this done. I was so excited to put this together for you. Okay, number one. If you're gonna be retirement investing or you currently are and you're just trying to get your mind right, wrapped around the whole idea of socking this money away, the first thing you gotta do, I'm gonna just say it, sounds general, and then we're gonna dive in. You gotta stay realistic in the beginning. The beginning is the hardest part, right? It's like riding a bike, starting a business, buying a home, getting your first car loan, whatever it is, the first part is the hardest part. We're trying to expand and do some different things around here, and the, the whole like getting the snowball going is it, just so tough, but if we keep pushing, we know we'll get there eventually. With retirement investing, you are not going to see rapid growth immediately when you start investing. Now, I know that's what we want, right? That's what you want to see. But in reality, you don't want that in the beginning when your account balance is so low. We've covered that in previous videos. I want to get to the math here. Okay, so number one, you got to be sort of realistic in the beginning. Don't expect a lot. Let me tell you why. I want to give you some numbers here. You know how we do those videos where I say, uh, someone's 30 years old, they want to retire at 65, they have so much in Social Security to be expected, other income, and we come up with some number of how they're supposed to invest. Well, we do that for every one of our customers. Right when we start investing for them, I send them a questionnaire saying, if you'll answer these questions, I will make it my homework to figure out how much you need to invest in your 401k with the company match and, and your Roth IRA or whatever you have. And um, so what I want to do is give you a quick one today. Let's say, oh, so for number one, being realistic. Why do we need to be realistic? Let's pretend you're 30 years old. Let's pretend you want to retire at 65. This is your window, okay? So you're 30 now, you want to retire at 65, and you said, Dustin, I want $50,000 in retirement income. Let's do the math, okay? So what we do is we work it all out for you with other assumptions as well, and in this case, we find out you need to invest 9850 dollars and change to get to that goal in the first year. So I always say within the first 12 months, you invest 98.50, some in your 401k, some will be the match from your 401k, uh, the company. Some of it will go in your Roth IRA. I make suggestions of how to do that. And then let's say we use 3% inflation. Each year, see we factor inflation as we go, so we don't have to guess. So the first year, 98.50, increase it by 3% a year, all the way until age 65, and given everything remaining the same, you're gonna have about 50,000. That was assuming a 7% growth rate, okay? Now here's why number one is to be realistic in the beginning. So if you're retirement investing and you're having a hard time with it, you're not sure, you don't understand it, number one, be realistic in the beginning because watch what happens. 
in the first year, you put in 9850. Uh, Let's assume you make 7% off of that and in the first year you actually get 7%. Your new account balance in year number 1 is 10,000, oops, $500. Okay? You, you put in some money, you got a little growth, 7%. That's where you're at. That's not very exciting, right? You put in some money, you got a little bit back. Okay, right? Maybe some of you go, well, that's cool. I mean, I got started and everything, but we do have people every now and then that go, what's up, right? I put money in, why is it not $50,000? So why didn't it grow to be so large, okay? That's your first year of investing. So in year number one, you're gonna be there going, wow, that was a lot of effort on my part to get very little in return. Now, if you've seen the video, in year number 11, now we've got a snowball building. So here's what's gonna happen. You will have been putting money in each year, raising it by 3%. When you turn 41 years old, I had to write it down, you will now have $190,000 in your account. That may not be exciting either. That's not even the exciting part. The exciting part is to get to this balance in year number 11, you will have put 13,000, what was it? 13,200 in of your own dollars. Remember, 98.50 plus 3%, the next year plus 3%, plus 3%, so on. You're adding, you're increasing your contribution. But you put in 13,200. Your return is 14,800. What happened? In year number 11, you, you can't keep up with your own growth, right? So you got to this 190, right? You put in 13.2, just making sure I got the numbers right, over the year between your 401k, your Roth IRA, whatever, you had 13.2 go in, your total nest egg is 190, but the growth portion of it, the free and clear money, right, in a Roth or whatever it is, is 14,800. What does that tell you? For every dollar you put in, you're getting more than a dollar back in growth. So at year number 11, oh man, right? You can't argue with that. Not that it maybe happens linearly like this, but you get what I'm saying. You put in 13.2, you get back 14.8. Now we're jamming. So you're 41 years old in this case. You know how fast that's gonna go, right? You, know, you got it. So 30 years old, not much happening year number one, year number two, you're like, what, what am I doing? What did I fall for? Year number 11, 190 and every dollar you put in is more, you're gonna grow more than you put in, right? I hope I explained that clearly. Okay, now let's go to year number 20 when you are 50 now and you have 15 years left until retirement when you're hoping to pull out $50,000 a year. Check this out. In year number, uh, well, when you're 50, so year number 20 for this, you're gonna have $601,000 in your account based on everything we've already talked about. 601,000. The interesting thing is raising this 3% a year for 20 years, right? Your contributions, I've run out of room, I'm gonna change colors. Your contribution that year will be $17,800. Remember, that's not all in one account. That's not all you. That's your 401k, your company match. You put in 5%, they put in 5%, some in your Roth IRA. You, you know what I'm saying. You put in 17800 but you're going to get 40, oops, $44,000 in growth. Just growth. What happened? When you're 50 years old, your account balance, the growth of your account, just the growth. This isn't combination like, oh, some of it was yours and some of it was growth. You put in 17.8 and you grew 44,000, all things being equal. So what happens there? By the time you're 50 years old and have 15 years left to go, the growth in your account could average what you're trying to take out if you make it to this point. And so that's why all these people, I think this generation, the next generation, has such a hard time with investing because they don't see immediate results. Let's go, come on. Oh, I invested in October this year and the markets fell. Yeah, that happens, <laughs> it's gonna happen, right? So they, they get upset and they're like, I don't see any growth, this doesn't make any sense, I'm cashing out, I'm moving on. You didn't make it to where the snowball builds size. So year number one, don't expect much. Do the part, get used to what you need to do, know that your plan's on track, all that stuff that we talk about. Year number 11, you put a dollar in, 
it's going to grow by a dollar or more, in our case, a little bit more. So every dollar that goes in, you go, hey, now I'm getting twice the return. I'm getting that dollar back plus some, right? Year number 20, you're about to hit your goal. It's actually year number 21.2 where your growth would be equal to your goal. You ever thought of it that way? This kind of stuff, I just ran, I just plug in numbers all day and I'm like, oh, that's cool, look at that. And then I try different things. I'm not perfect, but I do it. So by year number 21.2, you end up actually returning what your goal is for the remainder of the time between that year number 21.2 and your retirement age. If you're gonna retire at 67, just means an extra 100 grand in your pocket in this case, plus some actually, okay? So if you wanna retire early, it's harder for you to see that snowball. If you said, Dustin, I wanna retire at 50, right? Um, or, you know, some, I don't know, some young age, then naturally you didn't make it to the, the snowball where you're returning what your goal is. You, you stop the clock at that point. And so if you wanna retire early, more money needs to go in sooner, which is really hard because remember in the beginning, you see nothing. You see very little in returns. If you just started retirement investing right now, you're seeing negative. Imagine trying to sell that to somebody. Invest now because you're probably going to lose a little bit. The markets may fall. Uh, how, do you, how do you justify that? I get excited by that, but of course, you know, it's hard to justify if you don't know how it works. So number one, uh, if when you're uh, just getting started, stay realistic, right? Know that it takes time, but that time will work. I just laid out all the math for you. Every other video, people on YouTube or all their social media are just gonna say, you know, it takes time, compounding daily, Rome wasn't built in a year. Thanks, <laughs> right? Give me the numbers, show me what to expect. Okay, number two, let's move on. I promise you the first two, oh man, right off the screen, look at that. The first two are, uh, this is detailed. We obviously went very detailed into this it does pick up steam here. So if you're losing interest for some reason, your eyes are glo glossing over, hang with me. Number two, if you want to retire early or you are dead focused on a goal, you've got a number, you're working towards it, um, and that number is you know, basically counting on you saving everything to retire, meaning you're not using much social security, you don't have any other support, you're basically saving for retirement, you may need to skip the default plan at work. What does that mean? If you have a pension, they typically have a default, uh, default option, default investment option. If you have a 401k, they usually stuff the target date funds right in front of your face because what that means is you're saying, go ahead, you do it. I don't know what's going on. I'm gonna retire about 2055. Okay, I'll pick that one. It means that you're not gonna call and ask them for advice. It means that you're not gonna call and bug them going, what's in my investments? They're sort of using it, it's brilliant by the way, they're using it so that you go, oh, you got this? Okay, great, I'm just gonna let, I'm gonna put money in. They're making you be the most passive investor as possible. Nothing wrong with it, but you may need to skip that default, why? Because if you're trying to retire early or you're trying to hit a goal, we need every last percentage we can get. And I'm gonna give you an example, are you ready? Are you ready after that other one there? Do we need to take a break? <clears throat> I don't wanna take a break. Okay, here's the thing. I'm gonna give you a scenario. This happens all the time. As one of our customers, when you get all set up, we answer all your general questions, get you invested, and then we go, oh hey, do you have a 401k? Do you have something you want us to look at? Love to look at your other investments. We make no money off of doing that, but we'd love to see what's going on there because we think of your retirement as one big pile and you should think of any investment goal you have as one big pile. You don't buy one property and then another property and put them in two separate LLCs, do you? No, it's one big pile. The company itself makes a profit. Your retirement goal, your long-term savings goal should be one big pile. Okay. Let's do an example here. I'm gonna try the blue. If the blue doesn't work, yell at me or something. Um, okay, let's say your 401k, you go, Dustin, I got my target date fund. I got my target date fund in there. It returns me uh, or says, right, based on how it moves, 
I'm sort of closer to retirement. It's saying it's gonna yield me a 6.5% average, or at least that's what I can see. It's not very risky, but it's, you know, it doesn't grow as much, and that's the fun that you have, 6.5%. Let's just say, to keep the math simple, that the total net expense ratio, not gross expense ratio, is 0 0.50. That would be a little high, I think. Uh, for a target date fund, just to be fair, but I, math is hard for me. So six and a half, uh, and you have an expense ratio net, after all said and done, of a half a percent. Naturally, it means you're gonna yield 6%, right? You may, let's just say you average six and a half percent, and the cost is a half a percent. No problem. Now, let's say you come on over to Jazz Wealth, we get your other accounts going and you go, Dustin, would you look? Because there's all these other investments and I just don't know what they are. They all look more expensive. And so I haven't chosen them because they look more expensive. And I've been brainwashed to understand that fees are, um, you know, a bad thing. I, sh I shouldn't be doing anything that costs more than next to nothing, right? So uh, would you take a look at them? I go, okay, no problem. Here's what I found. And I, this happens all the time. I go, look, you're in the target date fund. Let me pitch an argument to you. I'm going to suggest you choose these three other funds or five or whatever we come up with. It depends on what's available in your, um, uh, you know, in your funds, right? They give you a whole list of choices there. Now, by doing this, if you'll stick with me and you'll switch to these three funds, I'll give you exactly what to do. 22.8 here, 19.2 here, whatever it is. I'll tell you what to do. And then I always say, here's the thing. You're only going to get a little boost in your returns. You're expecting this. I'm gonna bump it up just a little bit. The risk stays the same, meaning the overall volatility. We've calculated it to be the same. You're gonna get a tiny little bump up in your performance, and guess what? It's gonna cost you more. When we put it all together, let's say it's 0.88%. And you go, Dustin, um, it's just that I keep reading these books that say fees are bad. Everywhere else in life, you pay people, an air-conditioned guy, a pool guy, uh, you pay the dog kennel and everything, and you don't really care, like uh, the vet. You ever been to a vet? You go into a vet and say, what's the lowest you'll do it for? Like a vet, they should post the prices, right? To me, that kills me. You go to the doctor, how do you not know what it costs ahead of time? Nobody cares about that. But Dustin, when it comes to picking my mutual funds, um, I need the lowest possible cost. Do you? Do you really? So what we do is we look at this and we say 7% is gonna be the average return. I always underestimate that. I can actually figure out what it is, but I always underestimate it to you because I want you to be impressed. I don't want you to be disappointed. So we go, that's that. Now it's gonna cost you 0.88%, okay? What's the difference here? 0.12, right? We've got a 0.12% difference in return. Right? We're at 6.12 here. Your net is 6% there. You go, well, that, should I do that? It doesn't make a lot of sense. I get it. Yeah, 0.12%. Um, I'm happy to make the change for the 0.12%, but, you know, look, I, I got family. I got people in town. I'm not going to make the change for 0.12%. Well, remember the example we did here. The guy that was 30 years old, he's uh, retiring at 65, wants $50,000 a year in retirement, and um, let's play that game, right? Let's use what I just explained to you in the same thing. If we put his return at 6%, which was the net return of option one, or 6.12%, what do you think the difference is over all that time? I'm, I wrote it down because I want to show you this. It's 6%, 2 million, 72,000, 636, meaning, and I'm gonna give you the pennies too, 68. Meaning when that person, the 30 year old gets to age 65 and they take out the 50,000 a year, their account balance at that time is going to be $2,072,636.68. And you go, well Dustin, 0.12, I get what you're doing here. This is gonna be some amount that's more and you're gonna be all like, see, I told you. Right, 2,223,000, oh boy. 973.89. That's the difference. You can already see it is a sizable difference. It is a hundred and sixty-one thousand dollar difference by simply taking five minutes. Well, I take about an hour. I, I'm slow, 
But by taking some time and going into your 401k, the default options and looking at the other choices, you go, I can make a little bit more on average, but I'm gonna pay a little bit more. In this case, it makes sense to go into your 401k, pay a few extra basis points, get a few extra basis points, don't change anything. We don't wanna see massive fluctuations in your account just for 0.12%. That doesn't make sense. We want the same thing, we, we're gonna pay a little bit more, but we're gonna end up with a little re more return. If you're young enough, come on, not one of you, not one of you is turning that down. You're turning that down, turn this off, right? And just move on, <laughs> I can't help you. So big difference there. It's not always about picking that default fund when you get into your retirement. They want you to do that. I'm not a conspiracy guy, but I know the industry wants you to pick that because it's easier for them it's less headache for them, and that's because you guys wanna pay so little. So you pick the target date fund and they go, okay, but the deal is you can't bother us. You have to trust that we're doing the right thing because you're not paying them enough to take your phone call, right? Have you ever called your 401k company and said, I need some help? You see, I watched this guy on YouTube and he pointed out that the target date fund may not be my best bet. They're not gonna help you, right? They're not going to say, oh sure, pick these other three, it'll be fine. They're not allowed to. They don't make enough money, they don't even register for that. So careful there, do some homework, especially if you wanna retire early, that 0.12%, we better be looking at that constantly. Is there somewhere else we can go? Every six months, if you're retiring early, I wanna to talk to you. Do we need to make a change? In February, usually in February, they make changes to the funds, whether it's that they lower the cost or they add new funds or take some out. Um, it's usually in February, so I would wanna talk about that. So if you're one of our customers, that's something uh, that I want to do. Okay, number three. Sorry, I told you I'd be faster and then, you know, stuff happens. <laughs> you want to increase your dough to your IRA in down markets. You got to get this in your head. You, you Here's what we do. We time your contributions, the change in your contributions. You don't time the market, okay? So if you are just starting investing, you want the markets lower, slowly, but you want the markets to do this for like the next few years. This would be ideal for you. It's not going to make me look very good, I'll be honest with you, your 401k company is not gonna look very good. Any investments that you're buying and selling, you're gonna wonder if you suck at it or if you're actually any good. But if they do that and you're adding, 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 la, 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 all this time, you go from being 30 years old to 33 years old and now the markets take off again, ooh, you're gonna like that, right? So you wanna increase your contributions during these moments, because this doesn't ever happen, by the way. I mean, this would be ideal, but this doesn't happen. Markets move sideways and then it goes, panic, oh my God, new president, oh my God, midterms. And so that's what the markets end up doing. You panic during all of that. Don't panic, dive in, right? I don't care if you're putting $20 a week into your retirement account, make it 22. Change it for just that time, $22. If you put $100 in, make it 105. I'm not saying make it 700. I'm saying just add something extra. Be a part of the action. Don't be running away from the action because when you're running away, remember I always say, where's, Mr. Bo where's Bo uh, Warren Buffett? Where's he at? They released their earnings the other day and he didn't go on TV to talk about it. The man is so busy buying this dip, I'm telling you right now, we're gonna find out in January. So uh, you wanna increase your contributions in down markets. You don't wanna change your investments. You don't want to wait and then contribute in down markets because you're gonna be so disappointed that you missed it. It happens quickly. So you just wanna up it, right? Go in there and say, oh, I see the markets are a little bit lower. That sucks because my investments are dro dropping a little bit, but let me add 10 more bucks. Right, let me add $100 more this month because it happens to be about that time. Do it, you won't regret it. And number four, stats. Come on now. If you're not looking at some kind of stats or tuning into the, do uh, the closing beat at five o'clock, I love stats, man. Because like it or not, this entire stock market is boiled down to statistics. There is no more emotion left in the game. You are the only one investing and trading on emotion. The big companies, it doesn't exist. You no longer, like the guys at JP Morgan, you think they're all sitting around a room and some guy goes, hmm, I heard that Under Armour is no longer expensing strip club visits. I think the stock is going higher. They don't do that. It doesn't exist. If you went in there and you said that, they'd be like, get out, right? What are you doing? <laughs> it doesn't exist. 
It's all statistics. Great company, the Chicago Trading Company. Look up just the pictures of their office. It is not even set up in a way where people can come around and, and be like, well, what do you think? Should we buy pot stocks today? No, it's statistics. That company has more money than anybody, anybody, even Warren Buffett, even Walmart. <laughs> that company manages more money and it's just them. They don't take outside investors. They don't co like advertise on TV. It's just those people in that room. It's all their money. And that's what they do. It's all stats. You've got to find the stats. The market falls an average of 292 days going back to 1952. Uh, 1970, sorry. Going back to 1970, when the markets fall, meaning they're at some point and then they do this. And then they go to some point and then they do this. This decline from high to low averages 292 days. Not 10 years, not forever, right? 292 days. The, the one we saw in February lasted 12 days. So it's obviously an average, okay? So 292 days. The market is off of its highs right now, isn't it? Is the clock not ticking? from the high that we just set last month? Yeah, clock's ticking. Go back and count the days. You wanna do it later on the closing beat? Remind me. So 292 days. As the markets fall, up your contributions, up your contributions. You've got 292 days on average. Think of it that way. This is my opportunity, this is my opportunity. Oh shoot, the markets fell 10% in October? Okay, that hurts. Bump it up, bump it up, bump it up. And then when the markets start going higher again, go back to the plan, right? Smooth sailing. It's like when you're on a boat, you're going through a storm or a water spout here in Florida. You focus, <laughs> you focus as you're working your way around it. And then when you're done, okay, back to fishing. Do we have any bait left, right? That's it. So rely on the stats, look at the stats, ask for the stats. I would love to increase the number of stats that we give out and uh, trying to, <laughs> little by little. So uh, that's it. I would say a bonus one, by the way, hope that the markets fall in your building phase, years one through five-ish, hope that they fall slowly, not like October, <laughs> slowly. <laughs> okay, you put in a good word for me on a radio show. Oh my gosh. I, you know, I'd like to do a podcast, like, but I'd have to film it because like, why? who listens to that? I don't understand who listens to podcasts, but thank you so much, David. That's cool. Uh, man, Yeminian. Go back 18 years, so many people say that. So many parents call and say, I'm gonna get my son to call you. And I go, okay, I'll, I'll be here. <laughs> Time is king, cash is not king, yep. Uh, oh, show the market crash have eight, every eight years in, in, like in real life. That's even better, right? So David, the idea that the market doesn't crash every eight years, I mean, I know we're on this sort of faster cycle lately, um, but all of that goes into it because think about it. When you're 30, you're going to swing for the fences. Market crashes. I am going to pull everyone through it. Look, we're, we're doing well. We've got customers that have given us a shot. They're here. But I realized that a lot of them have never seen a market decline ever. They weren't investing in 2008 and 9, right? So there's going to be a pullback. I'm going to have to pull them through and they're going to say, I want out. I want to stop. This sucks. And I'm going to have to say, look, Forget about me for a moment. Let me pull you through it. When we get through the storm on the other side, we'll laugh about it because the next time it happens, you will help teach the younger ones what happens. All the older people that are with us, they're all laughing at the younger ones that panic. Uh, but of course, when you're 30, you swing hard. You go for as much growth as you can. As you get older, those market crashes that you're talking about become less and less effect on your portfolio because of course we should be investing less aggressively as you get closer to your goal. That's a good example though. And actually I did a video on what happens if you invested at the absolute high of every market and that's all you did. Lump sum investing the day before a crash um, and you still end up actually really well. Uh, but anyways, uh, oh man, more than college classes. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Um, actually, you do put properties in separate LLCs for individual protections. Uh, legal, for legal reasons, you might have an argument there. Do you think of them all as one big pile of money or do you look at them and go, oh, it's just, you know, it's this over here. Whatever happens to that one, I don't care. I hope not, right? It's your net worth. Granted, your net worth is spread out over many LLCs because you're worried about, get, about getting sued, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> you get confused when looking at fund fees, too many line items, hard to compare apples to Yeah, if you look at them enough times, uh, you start to see the games that are played there. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, can you do the math on someone starting last month with 3,000 and starting with a negative return? Um, I, what would, I don't know what the math would You want to email me? Let me know. I, I'm totally open for video ideas. I love it. Uh, based on your assumptions, do you run out of money at some point in retirement? Yes, Pedro. Uh, in this example, 87. So when you're 87 years old, you get to live till Christmas. You get to see new, well, you get to be there about New Year's and then you have to die, uh, right? on the year that you would turn 88. That's usually how we do it. Unless somebody tells me, look, my family all lives to be 95 or something, uh, but usually 88, uh, it's sort of a nice mix of averages there. Oh, thanks, Prince. I love it, man. Only issues with the status, who's creating the stats? Numbers can be manipulated. Uh, that's very true, Skyline. The 292 days on average is not something that can be manipulated. Um, I guess I could play with the game. Like if you go to 1987, it's 262 days. So I always try to mention the date that way, if you want to check it or you want to like figure it out, then you know, okay, from 1970, 292 days. If you want to speed up time a little bit from 1987, actually from that crash in 87, um, it's 262 days. The only reason I know that is because the, the closer you get in time, the less time the, the actual declines have been. So uh, leading all the way up to February with 12 days. Uh, so that makes a, people make an argument for a bigger decline at that point. Um, and of course, if you're gonna go by somebody's stats, here, a great example, guys. If you're still watching, great example. There, um, the Monday before the election, Hillary Clinton had a 91% chance of winning the election. If you ask CNN, right? So the stats were 91% and uh, President Trump was only supposed to have a 9% chance of becoming the president if you ask CNN. Okay, I mean, doesn't that kind of make sense, right? So right now, what they're saying is there's a 70 to 80% chance that the Democrats take control of the House. If you ask CNN or CNBC, if you ask a different channel, uh, Fox, they have a completely different narrative and you know, that's what they do. That's both, both sides have both you know, media. I'm not gonna get into that, um, but you, that is true. If you're looking for stats from someone that's biased, oh yeah, of course. I like the stats where I can go back in time and just go, well, that's the history. Like the 10% return on the S&P. People give me so much grief for that, for the uh, one video that I did. It's just the number. Like if you want to factor higher inflation, go for it. But when people say you're ridiculous, 10% is not achievable. Why not? That's the number. It's actually a little bit higher than that. So it's sort of weird. Uh, uh, I try to go by stats that we can all verify. If someone wants to go through and do it. Yeah, let's do it. Um, cool. What are some of your goals by the end of the year for Jazz Wealth? Um, I can't say yet, James. <laughs> I, I might be able to say as of the end of the day today, I'm hoping, uh, but I actually can't say. I would love to answer that question and I will answer if you remind me. I just can't say it today. <laughs> um, what does a stock buyback do for a company, say Apple, for example? Well, it puts a pretty significant bid there, right? If you look at Apple, why has it been staying up so high like that? because Tim Cook's been buying every seller for like however long it's been. So it uh, certainly acts as a good bit of support. But in Apple's example now, they're buying back more money than God has, right? I mean, it's like a ridiculous amount. If it's a smaller company, then it's briefly, it's usually just a quick thing. It, does, it just happens over a couple days and it's over. Um, Apple is a completely different animal. A company, by the way, can choose to say how they want to spread it out. That's usually divulged to everybody you know ahead of time. Uh, XCash TSP, if you can afford to, thanks for the videos. Uh, Jared, you're maxing out your Roth, you're maxing out, or you're matching your TSP. Can you put a little more, more money into the TSP? Depends on your goal. Um, if you're maxed out for the year in the Roth, yeah, you're kind of out of time. I mean, you got to wait till January. Um, but, uh, you, you may not have any other options. I mean, it depends on what that goal is, uh, that you're investing for, but sounds like that's probably what you want to do. Can someone in their early 20s get more aggressive than 100% stock funds? Can they get more aggressive than 100 Yeah, it boils down to the mix at that point. So like on our website, we have all the funds that we manage, but a lot of people think that we just pick one of them and, and that's just the game that we play. So it actually comes down to how you mix them. So someone that says, I'd like to be aggressive and I'd like to use stocks. We always ask you that ahead of time. Um, I'd like to be aggressive and I'd like to use stocks. It really becomes, what we do is start with the least aggressive mix that we have which includes a lot of the large cap, small cap, the aggressive stock fund, aggressive ETF fund, which is a little bit slower. And then we have the customer say, eh, 
I don't know. I saw what the market did and you know, I'd like to do a little bit more or whatever. I'm not too happy with it. Can you beef it up a little bit? Then we mix them around. So can you do better than 100% stock funds? It, I mean, I don't know what that means for you as is how you define that. Um, but I would say you could always get more aggressive. I've done a video on what point does it not make sense? It's the law, the diminishing returns. At what uh, point does it not make sense to take on any more risk for such a minuscule amount of growth? Mutual funds are horrible at that. The more aggressive the mutual fund, you are actually taking a linear amount of uh, risk or fluctuations in your account for a tiny little bit of return. So there is a point where everything smooths out and um, I love doing that. I love doing it. So a lot of our funds are based on that. We're only beefing it up to the point where it doesn't make sense to take any more risk relative to the return that we're expecting. If you're gonna expect more a 2% fluctuation in your account in exchange for a 0.1% possible return, that doesn't make any sense. You wouldn't do it. Uh, ways people hide shelter funds from the IRS. Actually, I ha I'm hoping to have um, people on the show, other people that sort of fill my knowledge gaps uh, for, um, it could be taxes, um, real estate, things like that, just so we get more of a, a current idea of what's going on. It's in the works. You, you really, it's hard, you have a hard time like convincing people, like it's okay, just talk to this, right? Nobody cares. <laughs> Gotta get them out of their shell a little bit. We'll get there. Anyways, uh, that's all I have for you right now. We'll be back at five o'clock for the stock market update ahead of, ahead of the midterm elections. Uh, we'll go over the stats, everything that I've found there. I've already given you one of them actually, so if you miss it, no problem. But if I help you, hit the subscribe button. I appreciate it, and we'll talk to you later. Why should you choose Jazz Wealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interest comes before ours.